Hello and welcome to this podcast on GAIN's 9 events of instruction. The purpose of this podcast will be for the following. To explain the various stages of GAIN's learning model, to use memory tools to remember the stages of the model, and to give examples of the model in use. Robert Gaines was a behavioural psychologist who focused specifically on how people learn, in particular how adults learn, and in particular how adults learn through instruction. So as part of his theory and his research, he came up with a nine-stage model for how people learn, or the nine events in instruction. Each of these events um, are linear insofar as that they are follow on from the other and each of them are the hallmark of what would be considered a good lecture or a good instruction. The very first of the uh, nine events is to first of all gain the attention of the students and if you look at the example of the very first slide that we saw there we had an example of an advertising campaign um, where someone used the idea of a highlighter pen in line with say the likes of the curb to grab people's attention um, in the same way the first slide is trying to grab the attention of the viewer what does that have to do with this lesson and this is a common thing that lecturers will do where they will start off the lesson with something interesting or they will start off with a question to bring and draw in the students into the lesson to try and motivate the students and to try and give weight to the lesson itself the second then of the stages is to inform learners of the objective so we, again we saw this with the example of our second slide where we stated the outcomes for the lesson itself. The idea here being that before you can ask the students what they're going to do for you as part of the lesson, you must first of all state what the lesson is going to do for them. Again, trying to motivate the students, having them so that they can see the function or the purpose of the lesson. The third stage then is to stimulate recall of prior learning. So this might be reiterating or restating information from previous classes that might relate to the new information that you're going to learn in the current class. Or if you haven't done previous classes on the area or the topic, it might be a case of getting students to look at their own lives or their own experiences and getting them to take information that might be relevant from that or information that they already know and be able to apply it to this lesson. Say, take for example, um, the topic that we're dealing with here, Gaines Learning Model. If we were teaching a class on Gaines Learning Model to a group of student teachers, we might want them to, say, um, talk about how to grab people's attention. They may not have had a formal class on grabbing people's attention, but they will all be aware of advertising campaigns or seminars or people who are particularly gifted at grabbing attention. So in this way we can use technology to take those examples and we can bring them into the classroom. You mean with the likes of the internet, within podcasts and YouTube, we can bring that symposium or that advertising campaign and we can apply it uh, within the class itself and we can then form a discussion around that and getting the students to try and work out why they think these things are important and then you can put a structure of a more formal structure and look at it in relation to your own class so you're trying to say that no one comes in without any information everyone comes in with information and then you're trying to bring that into the lesson itself the next stage then at this point really students are primed. They have been motivated, um, they understand the purpose of the lesson and they, ha un they understand what they're coming in with. So with that in mind the next stage is to present the content itself. So here we are stating the information, what the new content, what information the students themselves need to know. When it comes to structuring this content, the structure of this content will depend on content itself. If we look at say this lesson here in Gaines learning model um, the information is largely linear in its nature so the, the information is presented here in a linear fashion. We could also present information in a cyclical fashion if it was cyclical information or if we wanted to have a more free-form way of explaining something we might develop up a mind map so depending on the type of information that will dictate how we present the information. Likewise, how you want to present the information will depend on a number of factors like are you dealing with an individual that you can structure the class for that individual or are you dealing with a group of people or indeed are you going to deal with groups, plural of people that you want to relate to each other. So are you going to use group work as part of your lesson? 
So depending on how you want to structure the class, um, that will determine how you will actually um, say disseminate the information. And often it's a case of how you're going to um, develop the class or how you're going to deliver the class will be related to the initial outcomes. So you might have as part of your initial outcomes group work as part of one of the key outcomes. So that will determine how you will structure the class then. The next stage in is to provide learning guidance. Learning guidance is different from just presenting the information. If you take presenting the information is like stating the information, showing the information, providing learning guidance then goes and um, towards putting a context, putting a meaning to the information itself. If we take the example here of gains and learning model, if we were teaching that class on uh, of student teachers about gains and learning model, we might want to look at learning outcomes. We can state we, what a learning outcome is, but to provide learning guidance on it, we're going to, we would use, say, examples of, say, a learning outcome. So here we can see a, um, a portion of a syllabi document where we have intended learning outcomes. So we could show this to the students. We can, so not only do they understand what a learning outcome is, but they can see how it's used, what its purpose of in context is. Same thing applies with, say, the beginning of a chapter of a book. Um, here we can see learning outcomes higher and ordinary level. So again, the students are seeing the information in context and they have a much better understanding of how the information itself is used. As part then as of um, that same you know, learning guidance, um, students can be provided with, say, uh, easy tasks and help to help them remember the information. If we look at, say, things like mnemonics, um, say we want to help a student learn the nine stages of GAINS learning model. Well, we can take the first letter of each of the stages and we can apply a mnemonic to it. So we could say Galway is so perfectly placed for an easy plot on an autumnal evening. And by getting students to s connect the information with a phrase like that, we can also give a image associated with that, we can give a sound associated with that, uh, using the idea of, say, Vax learning model, using the different senses, we can provide it and make it easier for students to remember that information. The next stage then is to the elicit performance. So here we have a student practicing the information, and it's important that the students practice the information in the context that you want the information um, to be learnt. So if you have someone um, learning a computer program, well you can give them tasks that will require them to have competency to carry out those tasks. If you want someone to be able to just simply state information, well you can get them practice that. If you want them to be able to apply the information, you get them to apply the information um, as part of that. So, given the example here of GAINS learning model, you might, if we were dealing with that class of students, we might give the students a series of topics and get them to look at those topics and get them to apply GAINS learning model to those topics and in that way learning how GAINS model can be applied. The next stage in is to provide feedback. Now in this context we're providing feedback, we're not talking about summative assessment. Assessment where students are separated out, or a final assessment. In this case here, we're really trying to get the grade off the page, and we're trying to put the grade into the student. So this information should be, or this type of feedback, should be, first of all, immediate, insofar as that it should occur in the class itself as the students are learning. And it should be for feedback for learning. So if a student makes a mistake, well, that's okay. I mean, students should be allowed to make a mistake. What's important here isn't whether they get it right or get it wrong, but that we know what the mistake is so we're able to correct it. So it's a focus on learning. The next stage then is the assessment stage, so assess performance. So having worked from our continuous feedback, where the students themselves will need to be separated out and we will need to determine how well the students know the information. And it's often the case where this type of feedback, you know, I mean, this summative of feedback, should be reflective again of our earlier outcomes. So, if we want students to be able to demonstrate the um, information, then the assessment should reflect that, and the students should be asked to demonstrate that. So, if we want them just to, so if we want them to solve problems, 
we would expect them to be able to solve problems using the information. If we want them to state something, we would be able to ex expect them to state it. The last stage then is to enhance retention. This comes afterwards, so this is when students, when they have learned the information, now they're using or further applying it. So the information doesn't just stop at, um, at the lesson or at the module itself. Students will continue or continually improve and continually apply the information that they've learned, applying it to new situations and using it in new and innovative ways. So in this way, the information itself and what they've learned continues on endlessly. Um, getting to higher and finer levels of um, competency. So this is GAIN's nine events of instruction and thank you very much and I hope this has been useful for you.